In this video, I'm going to share the three steps that you need to take to attract your ideal clients to your brand. My name is Kate Putnam. I'm the psychology-driven brand strategist. So happy that you're here. If it's your first time, welcome. If you haven't yet, click the subscribe button below so you'll get notified whenever I post a new brand building video. Like I said, my name is Kay. I help entrepreneurs change the world with what they know. And we do this by unlocking their innate brand advantage so they can impact more people and grow their business. So after working with over 500 students and clients over the last decade plus, I have had the honor and the privilege of seeing exactly what works, what doesn't, and then also like simplifying my brand strategy process, right? I think Einstein said that if you can't explain something simply, you do not know it well enough. And that has definitely been my experience as a brand strategist. When I first got started, I didn't overcomplicate things, but I mean, I was like very, very focused on every single little detail. And then through experience and time, I've seen exactly what matters and what rises to the top. So like I said, in this video, I'm going to share the minimum things that you need to do to attract your ideal clients right to you. So I am assuming in this video that you already have some idea of who your ideal client is or who you think they might be. I'm not going to get into that whole process here in this video. I'm going to talk about what you do after you know who that person is. But let me just say this first, because if you don't, so if you want to attract your ideal clients, let's compare this to like making friends as an adult. This is top of mind because my family has moved from Naples, Italy back to the United States. And as my husband is looking for a job, we're going to be moving to a new place and I have to make new friends. Now we've moved every two or three years. So I am a veteran adult friend maker, but that doesn't make it any easier. And it doesn't mean that the steps are any different if you're doing it the first time or the seventh time. Right. And it's the same for your business, no matter how great you are at serving clients, you still have to go through the same steps to get new clients. Right. And if you were like, if you had the goal of making new friends as an adult, you wouldn't just stand outside front of your house and like wait for somebody to walk by and strike up a conversation. <laughs> like you might, but you're not going to make very many friends that way. They might not be super aligned with who you are and what you want out of a friend. So you have to be more proactive about it. Right. And before you can be proactive, you have to have a sense of your own identity to know who you want to be friend. Right. So if you're really into fitness, you might go to the gym or to a, a class to meet friends. If you're super intellectual, you might go to like a book club or a library. So similarly with your business, you have to make at least some initial judgment or assumption about who you want to work with. Cause you have to, in step number one, you have to show up where they are. So you don't want to just show up randomly to random places. You want to go where your ideal clients are actually hanging out for entrepreneurs. This could mean something like in Facebook groups that people are at or conferences, or you could show up in the magazines that they're reading or on the blogs that they're reading or as a guest of the podcasts that they listen to. So you have to make an assessment of, you know, who that person is and then start to make educated guesses. And then as you get more concrete data, like actual data driven decisions about where they're paying attention. So if you know, back to our friend example, maybe if you're a mom, you're going to show up at the local park where other moms hang out so that you can befriend some moms. And if you are a handmade goods maker, to connect with people who buy handmade goods, you're going to probably show up on Etsy or you're going to set up a booth at the local craft fair during the holidays, whatever you have to start making those connections. So you're in the same attention space as your ideal client. You're aware they're paying attention. Okay. So that's step number one. You have shown up 
in a place where they can find you. And then step number two is to share your values. Back in Naples, I did go to a playground one time and it was on the military post that we were attached to sort of and there were some other moms there. Now I wasn't actually in the same conversation as them but they were talking about how thankful they were that they didn't have to live on the Italian economy and that they never leave if they don't have to because they hate driving in Naples and some of their friends live off post on the economy but that they would never do that because it doesn't matter how good the view of the Mediterranean is like they don't want to leave their comfort zone. <laughs> I'm saying this a little tongue in cheek because my values are the exact opposite of that. Like I wanted to be fully immersed into the Italian economy. I wanted to travel as much as possible, put outside my comfort zone as much as possible. So point being, I knew exactly as soon as I heard them talking about this, that we were not a fit, right? Like, cause their values didn't match up with my values. We were never going to be close friends because we didn't have congruent values. So as a brand, you need to do the same thing. So whether that's in a guest blog post or in a Facebook group or as an interviewer of you know, somebody's podcast show, you need to be unapologetic about sharing your brand values. If you need help discovering what those brand values are, I actually just recently did a, va a video about defining your core brand values with five exercises that you can do to figure that out. So step number one, show up. Step number two, shamelessly share those brand values so that you're attracting ideal clients to you and you're repelling the ones that aren't going to be a good fit. Step number three of this minimum viable attraction formula just made that up is that you need to demonstrate that you can solve a particular problem for people. Now this is where the uh, friends analogy is kind of maybe a little bit divergent, but as a business, you exist to solve people's problems or to help them change in some way, to transform in some way or to reinforce their identity. So you need to be clear about the value that you can offer somebody. So, at the same time that you're sharing your values, which is like that segmentation tool, you also need to be sharing how you can help people and who specifically you help. Because as a brand and as a business, you, again, you have that idea of who your ideal client is. You have some sense in your mind of who you want to serve. So you need to share that context. I help entrepreneurs change the world with what they know. So by saying that, I'm segmenting out people who aren't experts, consultants, coaches, or creating you know, some type of product that is based off of their world experience, right? And I'm also like segmenting out people who don't have big like ambitions or dreams for their brand or for their business. And this is by design, it's intentional. And you need to do the same thing. You need to be very intentional and be very vocal about exactly who you help and how, you know, like what the outcome is that you help people with. And when you share those two things, your values and your value, <laughs> That's when your ideal clients are going to, like their ears are gonna perk up and they're gonna be like, oh, I think this person is for me. And then they approach you like, I'm one of those people and I want that outcome and I resonate with you. Like I, I feel like you get me. And then they come to you and they hire you without having this you know, crazy manipulative sales conversation or technique or strategy, you're going to naturally attract your ideal clients when you do those th three things. All right, show up, share your values, and share how you bring value to the world. So I hope this is helpful. If it was, press the thumbs up below this video, share an emoji below that demonstrates one of your brand values fun little bonus homework there. <laughs> so we'd love to travel, share a picture of the globe or a plane. You get the idea. I want to see what one of your brand values are. Share it unapologetically in the comments here below and I'll see you down there.